Yeah, we can just look at the spikes. <laughs> yeah, and then, and, then, and, then, um, and so so when I died at my funeral, John's gonna, gonna be talking like, "Hey, we're in the middle of the fucking podcast. You just died on me. Like, what the fuck? You just died. Uh, we we had a podcast to finish. We had a podcast to finish. Motherfucker has to die on me. I know. Fucking Wait, it mildly inconvenience me, uh, Colin. It, what makes this really hard is that you're a volunteer. That's why it hurts to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> keeping you um so yeah if you couldn't tell this is the life cast game of the year i don't think they could tell if you, oh, if you we, didn't we start because i just burped it to my mic <laughs> turn you down oh cool <laughs> um this is the life cast game of the year 2017 uh we have colin wait i thought i was doing the- oh you're doing wrestling welcome everybody to the life cast game of the year podcast 2017 where we discuss the best the worst and the wtf of gaming in 2017 joining me to the left. Yes, to the left. <laughs> the Corgi Lord himself. The keeper of the fighting game community. The saltiest Street Fighter V player you'll meet. Dan. And next to him, the only man on earth on his resume who puts meme critic as one of his skills. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> oh, God. And right next to Adam, the king of swag, a.k.a. Swag Nito, a.k.a. The Best, a.k.a. Greg. Pretty succinct. <laughs> and your the host Hi. of the Lifecast Game of the Year podcast, the queen of cyberpunk herself, Perturbator's biggest fan. No. And <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Perturbator's 423rd <laughs> biggest fan of the world. Thank you. And a wonderful girl Majima cosplayer herself, mm. Diana. Hi. And refereeing this fine occasion... Me. <laughs> That's Colin. That's Colin. I take wrestling way too seriously. It's okay. Someone has to. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. <laughs> it's a dirty job and someone's probably not going to do it. No, yeah. Not even Mike Rowe would touch that. Anyway. Anyways. Um, this is Game of the Year 2017. We're going to talk about games that we liked, maybe. Probably. Maybe. I don't like anything. Um, so, just a show of hands, who played a lot of games this year? I think we all Yay! did. Good job. Good job, we're, we're, everybody. Good job, fellow gamers. <laughs> fellow gamers. Hey, gamers. Hey, gamers. <laughs> you, you've made the prerequisite to be on the Gamers Show <laughs> the of gamers 2017, show. hosted by uh, Jeff Keeley. Oh, bo- oh. <laughs> that didn't translate well to audio. Well, Sorry, podcast listeners. Oh, the, the class, raising hands. The class. The raising yeah, yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. The old boy video game show. Um, But, yeah. We have a bunch of categories, serious and joke, that we're going to get to, and um, let's just start out. You guys know what a Game of the Year podcast is. You've listened to things Probably like Probably several it. of them. Yeah, so... Or maybe none of them, and we're your first ones. Thank you. Oh, we appreciate it. Oh. Huh. Part of also, you're cute. an idiot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! He's right. Yay. Also, thank you. I've got some pretty hot takes about Helmet Cougar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's just start off um, with... The, the, are we spinning a roulette? We should. Spin the wheel, make the deal, and it lands on... Dan, can you put a roulette wheel here in post? Yes. I'll spin it. Oh, yeah, you. spin it. Thanks. Uh, we're going to start out with most unique aesthetic. <laughs> I can't believe it landed on it. <laughs> I need to wow. look back. Wow. <laughs> you don't have to. You can just put like, a spinning anything if you want. <laughs> Let's just make your <laughs> life really dick. hard. Please. <laughs> I'm putting this on YouTube. The um, U of, of the tools. Okay. Uh, so yeah, up for most unique aesthetic, we have Persona 5, The Sexy Brutal, Pyre, Battle Chef Brigade, Cuphead, Last Day of June, Hollow Knight, Battle Chases Night War, King's Way, and Gravity Rush 2. And everything. Yeah, yeah ev- we put everything under every category because we thought it would be a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and everything. Um, thoughts? I would like to, right out of the gate, make an argument for King's Way. Okay. Kingsway. Um, it is a game a little, like, fantasy point-and-click RPG uh, where you're playing through a Windows 95-esque interface, mm. but that interface is used as part of the combat mechanics of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, the aesthetic is, you know, nothing new, mm-hmm. but I think the way they use it is a merit towards how unique it is. Okay. So would you say category. So, so would you say that's more of, like, unique, like, gameplay beats, or, like, it looks unique. No, because it of looks it. incredibly unique. Hmm. So, and it was, and it was like decent, also. Yeah, that always helps. So yeah. the 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 thing I'm just gonna go off the game. The thing I'm gonna for here is definitely 
Um, it's hard to say. There's two. Uh, there's two I'm really gunning for. Actually, <laughs> I think I'm looking. Now, 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 like, now that I relook at the list, there's two yeah. that I'm really gunning for. I, I'm pretty sure all three of us have the same two. Yeah, the the, the two the two the and two it, at the and, top and, right and, now and, is and, Cuphead and, and, and Pyre for me. Um, the re- the reason I'll, t- I'll talk about Pyre real quick. So Pyre, it. The, the the sort of thing that makes it unique is the sort of overworld itself. That you sort of like when out when you're outside of the missions and when you're not talking to people, the sort of overworld looks like it sort of looks like layered paintings almost. Mm-hmm. As you're sort of like going through it, and what what ends up creating is this one uh, very unique aesthetic, but also one of the most beautiful, just like overworlds in in any video game that's ever been. Like I, my computer's not that great, but I've seen like 4K screenshots of this game and it's something to behold like i've never seen anything quite so interesting because like the world itself you're like if, if you don't know the story of the game you're sort of cast into like no man's land like the forbidden land and so it's like the the aesthetic is or like the sort of like terrain is very like chaotic and at the same time beautiful and uh it's just fucking cool <laughs> so it's like, and uh the other game I was talking about is uh, Cuphead, for most definitely. That's the, that's definitely that's the top three for sure, if not number one. Um, if you had if you had to pick only one, which one would it be? Or do uh, you want to I'm, I'm still working it out. I'm yeah, kind of curious to see what other people okay. say. Yeah. But the reason I I hold Cuphead in such high regard is because Cuphead is a very okay game. Mechanically, it is totally nothing, nothing special, nothing that interesting. But what propels this game to the next level is obviously its art style that's what the whole game was sold on but what they do with it is amazing they the creativity they show with the with like the just the designs of all the characters and like the way the bosses like move and the way they transform into their new phases yeah. is just it, there's there's nothing quite like you know it. Th- this game's animation there it's like some of the best i've ever seen and it's not necessarily in just like your standard animation. It's like just like the subtleties of just them even like changing their smile even slightly and just just to add like a little extra to it. And they really fucking go all the way with that. Yeah. They go all in on style with this game. Like this like this game, like I, I was mentioning before, this game is like I said, mechanically or just like as a base game itself, it's just alright. It really like the aesthetic is really what takes it to that next level. It's yeah, not, it's it's what it, it like it's it obviously doesn't carry it because, you know, there's some like yeah. fantastic design boss fights in there, but it like yeah. if this game lo- was just like regular three D models, this game would not be. Yeah, no, it would anything. not have captured. The, no, it would not have captured anything. Like, like, like the hopes and dreams of all yeah. the little kitties. Yeah, and 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 what I really dig about it is how well it all works together. Like it, like its art style, its sound design, its music, all like are just. Yeah. They just mesh together so fucking well. Yeah, it's like about a clean it's, fucking vision. It, it, it's so yeah. Like they, I remember, they, we all saw this game. You know, it's been in development for so long. Yeah, and. The fact that it came out and it was any like no one, no one thought this game was going to be this cool. No, 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 no one, yeah. a single person. Yeah. <laughs> so Adam, I, yeah. you're throwing your hat in for uh, um for Cuphead. Uh, I think the two that I really like on this list are Cuphead and Persona Five. I think I think the, uh, Persona 5's aesthetic is the only reason I like that game. To be honest, like like even if I have like a tiny bit of like for that game, it's because of its aesthetic. Yeah, and that, like, oh man, like fucking. Have you ever seen like just a battle system that looks so fucking cool and so stylish? Yeah. And every time you select something, it like transforms in this really fucking cool, obscure way. And not to mention, it's fucking finishing. What what are they called? The finishing know. all out attacks. All out attacks. All, the, all, the all attacks, out attacks? Yeah. Oh my fucking god! The yeah. Oh. I d- I definitely share a similar love for with yeah. Persona Five. The only yeah. thing that holds it back for me is the fact that. Just how it looks normally. Yeah. yeah. O- just, outside of its battles and o- yeah. outside of the like, even it's just even just the three D models in this game, they don't look nice. Yeah. Like so it, I, it is literally. I, not to take away time for you, but Dan hasn't spoken yet. And yeah. <clears throat> Dan, what do you uh, what do you think is the most unique aesthetic of twenty seventeen? I'm in the same boat as Greg with Pyre and Cuphead. Um, I would probably <clears throat> like I I definitely say I prefer the style of Pyre. Just, like, aesthetically, because it's just more of oh, yeah. my kind of look. Yeah. But I, I have to fucking command the art direction for Cuphead. Like, I don't think I've seen better, like, art direction in a game, period. 
I honestly don't think there like is any. Like <laughs> it's so fucking insane. <laughs> so it sounds sounds like three of you got tiebreakers. If you guys had to pick one, <laughs> you gotta pick one. Cuphead, hundred percent. I go Cuphead out of respect. Yeah, <laughs> Greg. So hard. <laughs> I love both these games very much. They're very dear to me. Uh, I mean, uh, as as easy as it would be to pick tiebreakers for everybody. In the words of in the words of Highlander, there can be only one. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hey, can, I'm I, gonna I, can I offer you like an outside suggestion to to ease your struggle a little bit? Sure. How about Kingsway? <laughs> well, <laughs> we 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 we, 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 we played you know those like DOS clone type things. Yeah, those, sort of those have yeah, happened for like, a little while. It's not. I'm not. Like, I'm not I'm, uh, uh, it's it's of, a nominee. I'm not trying to put it down. No, but no, like, no, no. Of of the most unique aesthetics yeah. that I have seen in video games, Kingsway takes the the MS DOS. Not MS DOS. Windows ninety five like vaporwave aesthetic and elevates it. Yeah, sure. Maybe it doesn't like that style the best. But when was the last time you saw a nineteen thirty style video game like ever? Yeah, this is actually as far as I know. Yeah, but the nineteen thirty style is an aesthetic already. Yeah, but, but not, so not, not, not in yeah, so is vaporwave That's true. and also not in a video game. Like this is that the, is true. Yeah, that is true. And like this is the first game to nail that aesthetic, and it does it. Probably better than anyone else will try it. Yeah, and yeah. better than the 30s. Yeah, like, better than the 30s. Because not only is it like modern day, it's yeah. not 24 FPS. Yeah. This is like 60 yeah. FPS. So it's like. also the first uh, video game in I don't know how many years to be hand drawn. Yeah. 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 Is that, there's probably definitely some of that in yeah. Pyre. Those backgrounds are definitely actual paintings. Pyre looks really fucking good. Yeah. It does. And so, Greg, uh, what's, what's your choice? I, I'm going to have to pick. Cuphead just because of like like a respect thing. It's yeah. like you you have you I, I've said this before, I'm saying you have to respect Cuphead. Yeah. Cuphead hey. is not in my top three like goatee spoilers, but I respect the shit of that fucking game. Yeah, you, know you need to like like the the thing that really like clinches it for me is that like Pyre is a very it's a very, very fucking gorgeous game. Absolutely. But like there's a certain level like like there's a, a, a very fine line between like having a good aesthetic and like Art direction, yeah. because art direction is a lot more like brainstorming on exactly what you want like this to look like and this to be. With Pyre, it clearly has some really good art direction, but it's like a lot of it you can tell is just kind of oh hey this looks nice, yeah, you know. Yeah. Whereas Cuphead, it's like there are so many just like minute details yeah. that they put so much work is. into. Yeah. And <laughs> like if you're, if you're like glove big... colors, I don't know. If yeah, you know yeah, they change. Yeah, just... the glove colors change, and it's, it's just a reference to how like often Mickey Mouse is. Uh... Mickey Mouse's like gloves would change back in the day or whatever. Yeah, and, it's crazy. Um, also, if you're a big fan of a lot of those cartoons, every boss is a reference to a classic '30s cartoon. Not just Disney, but Warner Brothers, um, Max Flesher, all those studios that are all just legendary in the animation field. Yeah. So even even if you're not a gamer, you're a big animation buff. Like this yeah. game can be just just go on the easy difficulty and just yeah. Yeah. fucking just enjoy. Just watch. Yeah. This isn't I, the hill I'm gonna die on. So. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> Fun fact, uh, my brother, I, I sold my... <laughs> trying to take my IP? What? <laughs> fun facts? It's, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun fact. Actually, it's fun fact, and it's all going to be one word. Okay, fine. With, with, no, with no vowels, but we're going to spell it like a startup. Oh, okay, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, first continue. Fun fact. Fun fact. Colin can continue his thing. Uh, my brother is actually sold on Cuphead just based on the art style. My my brother plays Madden and NBA 2K, so it's goes yeah. to show like how far reaching that art style is. So it looks like Cuphead has taken most unique aesthetic. I feel like we should talk about a little other things though, just yeah. to like run yeah. down and because like you know these aren't the only oh yeah absolutely. three good looking games on this list. In yeah. fact, there's ten of them. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I like yeah, the yeah. way the sexy brutal looks. I just like that game a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I've seen like screenshots of it. It it's looks so really cute. nice. Yeah. I really like how it looks. <clears throat> Battleship Brigade looks fucking gorgeous. This is really cool, like watercolor style thing. Mm. Yeah, and it's animation. And, and it's like, it, it's like, <laughs> I love it because like the character designs are like, like almost like intentionally like bad. Yeah, not like it's not I mean, bad. Not, not per se. bad. It's like it's like it's almost like a campiness to it. Yeah, yeah. Or it's absolutely. like you you look like in like an eighties anime character. Yeah, you yeah. do. But it's like, but it's okay. It's, but it's, like the, the rest of it is like really actually really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's really, like, cool because uh, Adult Swim Games has really been, like, 
finding their niche lately, yeah. Yeah, and Battleship Brigade is like really falling into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's a really good example of what exactly the kind of games they want to publish are. Yeah. yeah. And they're publishing Toe Jam Arrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Yeah. Um, I like Battler. Kat's costume from Gav- Gravity Rush 2. Oh, yeah, is that just the, the, the rest of the game aesthetic really of the cool. game? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. I, I just love their outfits. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not a girl, but if I was... I would totally dress up like those girls in that game. <laughs> yeah, that's, what's yeah, not the same. dopest like, fucking outfits I've seen in a long time. But um, speaking of games, I love daily Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight has this yeah, very Hollow Knight also looks really good. interesting sort of aesthetic where it's almost like I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's like picture like the your standard like like classic like haunted carnival type thing. Yeah, and like how like the light is always like cut off from the corners, mm-hmm. like visually. Vignette. It's kind of got that. Is that what it's called? Yeah, vignette. it's called a vignette. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's got that sort of like vignette lighting and like the sort of like it's simultaneously like creepy and horrifying at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the last, I haven't like jumped. I, a game hasn't made me jump in a while. Yeah. And um, I don't also don't play horror games, so that's probably why. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, the fact that everything is just got these like big like sort of chibi eyes, but it's also like kind sort of, of fucking like gross. Yeah, kind of <laughs> gross. They're all, almost all the monsters you fight like mindless yeah. husks. There's this terrifying Same. enemy where you kill. So it's like the, the spiders have like embedded themselves in. Yeah. The normal enemies you fight, you mm-hmm. kill them, and then legs sprout out of the thing. And the sound it makes is the most... Mm. No, this one loses just because it has spiders in it. No. Nope. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's that's why I didn't win. But And then, like, <laughs> legs sprout out, and then it's super fast, and it runs uh, at you. No, thank you. Oh, it sounds like a bad time. I hate it's it. It's so good. It's so I, I good. So it, it, it's, it's kind of like uh, in, in the thing when the dude's head becomes a spider? No. Yes. <laughs> That sounds so much more horrifying when you just describe it. Like, yeah, what, no, right? like I, I love. Oh my god! One of one of my, one of my most like is like the whole parasitic thing, like something living inside you. Woo! I, so I so think it's thing. cool when it's like not a spider. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have worms. severe arachnophobia. Yeah. Little worms are cute. Yeah, really cute. Was, the, the little caterpillars. Yeah, yeah. So oh, they're, the caterpillars. they're so cute. The caterpillars, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, they're really cute. I love those guys. Yeah. Right, what um, else you got? Um, um, I also want to say one thing about Hollow Knight. Yeah, that is like. The aesthetic itself, I don't find particularly, like, super standout, but it's definitely a huge contributor to probably the best part about the game, and that is just its atmosphere. Yeah. yeah like, I, like, that is, Hollow Knight is by far the most atmospheric game I've played this year. Mm. And that aesthetic is absolutely, like, one of the big players in why it is like that. That and its sound design, which is fucking brilliant. <laughs> <coughs> sound design. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. You probably have something to say about Battle Chasers. That's yeah. <laughs> what I've basically been waiting for. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you can't tell. Yeah. Um, for those who aren't familiar, uh, Battle Chasers is a game designed by Joe Matararo, who is one of the most, who was one of like the premier comic book artists in the '90s and uh, late 2000s. Battle Chasers was considered to be his magnum opus, a big, big creator-owned series that was going to take off, and a string of personal issues kind of caused him not really to finish it on time. That being said, the game not only um, not only does the game feature brand new artwork from him and brand new characters, like that aesthetic alone is is appealing to any fans of the comic or just comic art in general. Yeah. But the game is a retro JRPG, but it isn't it isn't like the typical um, indie retro thing where it's like, hey guys, look, it's retro. It's just kind of like, here you go. Like yeah, it, it knows it, what it is, and it presents itself like as it. Yeah, is. It, 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 it uses the gameplay elements. It doesn't borrow the nostalgia. It, yeah. it it takes like this is what a JRPG is. That's this is just a game in that genre. It's not, hey kids, I remember you played me when I was a kid. Here's yeah. a new one. Yeah, it very, but like I hate it, that it shit. takes <laughs> so much from other JRPGs and makes like a very its own again its own unique aesthetic where it's more like more like not really unique aesthetic, more like a celebration of JRPG cliches. Yeah. In the best way possible. Mm. Not so much as just fucking like the sick. This shit's sick. Yeah. In terms the of sick. like, in terms of like, if if this was like sickest aesthetic, as in dope, as in fat shit, nope. That's definitely number <laughs> one. Well, well the, the best way to describe Joe Moderato's art is dope and sick. Yeah, yeah. He also two C's at the end <laughs> of dope of, dope. of <laughs> sick. He also and dope. he also <laughs> they're silent. Does, yeah. He also does not exist. Who the artist? Joe Matarara. Uh No, it's more or less an inside joke. Um, when I went to New York Comic Con for the first time, yeah, 
he was there. I was pumped. You know, he was going to sign my copy of Deadpool and Circle Chase, the first major series he worked on. Fun fact. <laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was never at his table. So I was like, oh, man, I keep missing him. And I'm like, man, I, I keep missing Joe Madden. Every time I said Joe Madden, people would say his name in, in hushed tones. Like, oh, Joe Madden. Joe Madden. Joe <laughs> Madden. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, and then, and then the tales came out. Like, I heard he got in the Marvel when he was sixteen. I heard he impressed Stan Lee at some random convention. I heard this. I heard that. So I'm like, so does Joe Moderar does not exist? <laughs> and then he appeared at E3, and I was like, are you real? <laughs> and then I'm playing this game. I'm like, is this game real? Am I real? Goddamn right it is. It's awesome. Um, and that's all I have to say about Battle Chasers for now. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, we all set sorry. for unique aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 I can't speak for last day of June because I didn't play it. Sorry, I Kennedy. also can't. It's, uh, I, 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 I haven't played it, but I've seen enough of it, and it's like, really unique. The only two like games I've played on this list. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's, it's really, really oh, nice. Like, kind of like the Neverhood? Yeah. The it's, only, it's really, really cute. The only two games I've played on this list are the sexy, brutal, and Pyre. <laughs> <laughs> Pyre has a great like, art Pyre style. looks so good. Pyre, it's like the only... But Cuphead, Cuphead does look good. Yeah. Fucking, fucking good nice. Yeah. <laughs> fucking good nice. I'll give Pyre credit where credit is due. Yeah. Out of the three games Supergiant has made, it is the only one to both look good in its, like, promotional art and in-game. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, like, you know, Bastion, Bastion like and <laughs> Transistor are fucking fantastic games. Yeah. They're both great. But, like, they're pretty because of their promotional art. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it definitely yeah. takes steps like Bastion, like in games, but Transistor is definitely a, 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 a big step up. And I think there there are some good aspects of it. I love the use of like lights and colors in it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this one's the whole fucking package. Yeah. yeah. It's just good the whole time. <laughs> um, In that vein, should we do most soul? I was just going to say. Yeah. Now we talk about a game with a unique aesthetic. Uh, what about a game with some character? Some sure. Sure. Soul, Whatever. if you will. Sure, let's do some, uh, let's do the, some muscle. The nominees... Should we should explain what we mean by yeah, most yeah, yeah. Yeah. soul? Because yeah. I'm kind of unclear on this yeah. also. Games, so, that, games that have character, games that have a personality, games that have, games cl- that have cl- clearly had a lot of hard work. Yeah. Mm. And, and, I, I, I think that, that's the, that's the yeah, part. That's the love factor. Like, yeah. 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 It's you like, can you like can feel the passion of the devs yeah. Yeah. in playing the game. Okay. Like like someone was writing a line of code and a tear just came down. Okay. Yeah. I guess the... Which developers like a vision of what they think this game is was the clearest is, yeah. is a way to mm. is another way. Yeah, to we're, we're, we're going we're going to measure how much they cared about their own video yeah. games from afar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the That's five, what we're the doing. five most unqualified people, like people that, to be doing this yeah. are doing this. It's yeah, up yeah, I, like that. yeah. No, I mean, pretty much just of it is. Does this game? Do, do do the devs love show through? We're not going to yeah. say which yeah, game, yeah, yeah. You know, which like, game they put the most love into. Yeah. But it's, it's like when like, you yeah. bake cookies versus when grandma bakes cookies. Yeah. You can okay. tell that the love is baked into grandma's cookies, but you you you're like you ate. Yeah, half you don't the like yourself before it went into the oven. Mm-hmm. Oh, half it! I eat all. But yeah, what we have up for most soul is we, Cuphead, Hollow Knight, Mario Odyssey. Uh, you see, oh, you see, you see. Uh, Pyre, A Hat in Time, Sonic Mania, and everything. And that's a legit entry. Yeah, this is yeah, actually this is a legit legit entry. entry. This is the only yeah. category yeah. it'll be. In. Um, <laughs> I, I will the make the case for everything because there are so many like details, and there's such a like a nice cosmic sense of wonder put into that game yeah. that I can't help but imagine that the devil's like, I feel really good about the world, you know, post twenty pre twenty sixteen, uh, <laughs> and just started to work on this game. Yeah. And then things started going to shit, and he was like, I'm going to release this despite everything. Ha! <laughs> like that. Um, so yeah, I I think a lot of the devs like passion just for life yeah. shows through and everything. Mm-hmm. Sonic Wait, is, Mania. This is going to be a Sonic really... Mania is my second, that's not fair. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. No. So everything's an actual game? That yes, there, yes, there's an yeah. actual game called Everything that came out. But not yeah, that's every, the joke. But not every entry saying everything is the game. Everything. Some of it is actually just the word everything. No, no, no it's no, just all the game. Every, everything. Is it all the game? Everything. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was like a mix. No. <laughs> no. This is not. This is the only real entry of everything. But everything is technically entered into every category. <laughs> yeah. Um. But this is the yeah. only serious crime. Yeah, Sonic what, what, Mania. What we're saying? Sonic yeah, Mania. Yeah. Sonic Mania is a game made literally just because of love. This entire game only exists because people love Sonic, even though they're all bad. 
And <laughs> sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm a huge Sonic fan. Um, I mean, you can still love things that are bad. Yeah, I, mean, I, I love some Sonic stuff. You know, I, I love my, I love my. Sonic there, 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 there's some fucking terrible ones. Oh yeah, no, but like this entire game was just like we love Sonic. We're the next, we're the generation that grew up on Sonic, and now yeah. we are skilled enough to craft our own games. Yeah, and they got hired by Sega to do it, Never and killed. they just bodied Sega. <laughs> Just bodied them. They didn't yeah. even with have a love. chance. Yeah, they they bought them with love. love. Yeah. They're like, if you're not going to treat your franchise with care, we will. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll do it way fucking better than you ever will. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you hire us as a studio. Because yeah, they were motivated by love and not money. Yeah. And they got rewarded with money. Please and thank you, all you beautiful gamers out there who bought <laughs> Sonic Mania. Yeah, but like... I guess we'll break down Sonic Mania a little bit more. So how how it really works out is so do, each. Do the rest of you guys think Sonic Mania? Sonic Mania is not I mean, my choice. I mean, we're, we're talking. I'm just. Oh. I, 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 I I have other ones to argue, but yeah. Sonic Mania is still up there for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Sonic Mania is also up there for me because yeah. like literally. Yeah. 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 All of the reasons. You yeah. Said. Yeah. Yeah. So so how it works, they break it down into like two sections. They have like the first act, which is like here's what you did play. And they, they like, make their whole new thing in Act yeah. 2. And they're like, this it's is like, what you're playing now. No, this is what you wanted to yeah, play. Yeah, it's like, this is what you wanted to play. And they just um, add so many cool new mechanics and just cool shit in their yeah. levels. Like, and so, so I feel like there might be a little bit of... <laughs> so with that design decision, they, they literally do, like, like you said, you play the older level, then you play their new, better version of it. Yeah. Which, I don't know, I feel like there's, like, a little bit of, it's like a subtweet... Oh, it's absolutely. <laughs> it's like, yeah, where it's like, like, fuck the old games. You, yeah. uh, you're sitting here like, oh, here's a, here's a nostalgia rush, and then they sort of hit you in the face. No, the games you liked are bad by you know can today's you, standards. Can you turn two down and uh, behind touch. It's the first column, bottom one, just like a hair. Yeah. yeah. Continue. <laughs> like, here's here's the game you played. Um, it's bad now by by modern standards. Here's our new better one. So almost it's like it, it, it almost kind of lowers the love a little but bit I, for I, me. I, I, I also don't think that's what they mean by. Yeah, it. I think I they're like yeah, reminding you like, of a what? thing. Yeah, Can you yeah. also take then, three down a hair. Okay. It seems like they're just kind of like reminding you of what it was to kind of like put you back in there. Yeah. 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 And then, and, then, and then showing you their take on it. So I, I wouldn't really say it's <laughs> them being mean. It's here's our here's our take on this. I, I do I hope they know that that's. That's how it was for me. Every single time I was like, fuck, I'm doing the old stage. I do yeah. not like this. Please, can I get to act two? Yeah. <laughs> and, and act two would be kick your ass. Yeah, yeah. Like, every time. Uh, there is one thing that sours the love factor for me on Sonic Mania, and it's the fucking live system. The live system? The live system. system. Oh, oh, yeah. It was, here, we're going to take you through this shitty first act. Or first, yeah, first act. First, first, first act. act. And then we're going to give you this really good one. But if you die, if you lose all your lives on the second one, you have to play this shitty first one again. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, I definitely um, struggled with that. So, but, um, no, it's not my first choice for that reason. So, I mean, yeah, even I then the acts only last, like, a minute. Yeah, they're, they're, like, they're, like, pretty short levels. Have you seen me play a Sonic game? Yeah, I'm pretty bad at them, too. And I'm, no. so, I'm supposed to be good at video games. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 but Adam, uh, yeah. what, what's your case for... For for what? For most... Uh, most okay. soul. Um... Um, I think uh, honestly, I could I could see me going with all of these, but like yeah. Hollow Knight and everything. To be honest, but like if I had to, if I, if I had to pick two, it would probably be uh, Odyssey and Sonic Mania. Um, but you gotta pick one. Probably leaning more towards Mario Odyssey, just because of how much. Um, just I I really love um how they don't stick with a a single theme with Mario Odyssey. It just feels like a bunch of people in a room just throwing ideas at a wall. And instead of saying, no, that's bad, they're just going to, like, keep with it and try to, like, make it cool. And I think that really shows through because, like, when you're going world to world, there's such different, like, dramatically different things. Not only in art style, but in, like, gameplay and everything. Like, they don't stick with a single theme, yet it somehow, like, meshes into this whole thing that's, like, Mario's journey. And I think it, it, it each each level is, like, crafted with such amounts of love all of the characters in it are cool and creative even if they're just like a fork with a face on it they're still like really fucking cute and um yeah this game's got a lot of fucking soul and it also like speaks through the soundtrack and everything i think this game is it's got a lot of fucking soul speaking of games that speak through the soundtrack pyre so pyre is obviously every game in this list was put with a lot of love but there's something 
there's something special about Pyre. Every Super Giant game, you can kind of tell that yeah. like, this is like their everything. This is their new baby. And they put their heart and soul into this. But the, one of the things that, that makes this one sort of stand out is, ironically, the soundtrack. I say ironically because their soundtracks are always good. But the weird thing about this one is that I'm not entirely sure how to interpret this information yet. Not to interrupt you, but we do have the most engaging soundtrack act. So <laughs> That's might want to save some of that energy for that. <laughs> We're not doing that next, but no. Of course. <laughs> but um, don't worry. Greg has all of his energy saved for soundtrack. I'm gonna take yeah, it this after. Is, this, <laughs> is, <laughs> this is very low energy, yeah. Greg. This, this, so, this is this is just the preview. Yeah. <laughs> so d- in the soundtrack, there is this sort of weird thing. Like I mentioned before, there you're sort of in this abandoned land. But in the soundtrack itself, it it features it features like inspirations from like yeah. many different cultures which is something i find very interesting there's like this straight up just like an irish like celtic like 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 tune but one of the songs is actually just that and i know this sort of game itself is based off of like uh arabic like folklore and so there's a sort of like heavily yeah mm-hmm. yeah and so like there's there's this sort of interesting like blend where it's just like you can tell like a lot of like research and like time was put into like making all of these sort of like different cultures sort of blend together and to sort of like make that all work and not to mention just like how sort of like how many layers there are to every character there's there's i want to say like nine people in your party that's maybe and uh each one is just like super interesting layered and not to mention like all the sort of lore that's all around you like every there you you have this book that's just that is just like like it really feels like a, just like a font of knowledge. It's got like stories from like gods, and it's got like we got the gods sort of talking about the terrain in the area. You got gods talking about like all these sort of different ideas and concepts, and you have like this land you'll never visit. It's there's just so much there. It's so densely filled with information that like man, you got you got you got you got you got to give it up for that kind of dedication. Yeah. They put in a lot of work, yeah. and it's, like, super... Like, I- I've only played, like, an hour or two of Fire. Yeah. Uh, and it still, like, shines through entirely exactly how much shit they did for this game. Like, it's legitimately incredible and impressive. Is that one of the games you're going to argue for, Dan? Uh, probably not, actually. <laughs> really? Uh, I really, so really love it. But, like, first, first of all, every single one of the games on this list deserves it. Like, I can't think of a single one on here that I would argue against. Uh, I actually had to remove the joke. Everything just was throwing me off. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> you got two everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nope, too much. Oh, wait, that's right. Everything was on there twice. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I would probably argue either like A Hat in Time or Sonic Mania. Because like A Hat in Time is like... <sighs> Back in the, the early 2000s GameCube era, there were just a lot of these like 3D platformers that just kind of like weren't perfect, but just kind of owned up to it and just rolled with it. And this is exactly what A Hat in Time is, and that's exactly what its aesthetic was going for, and they fucking nailed it. I think a lot of the things I can say for A Hat in Time is basically the same things that Adam said about Mario Odyssey. Like, in terms of, like, what they do with the game, they're very similar. Uh, It's like they were just throwing ideas at a wall, and they just went with them. A Hat in Time is super varied. You know, you have a world inhabited entirely by the Mafia, and they always address themselves and others as Mafia, so you can never tell if they're talking in the first or third person. Uh, you have a, literally a world based around a penguin and a, not a crow, but like a, what was it, a pigeon or some shit? Right. A, a, a penguin and like another bird entering the bird film contest and composing short films. I don't know what the fuck he was. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what the fuck he was. <laughs> he was bird. We have penguin and bird. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you have a, a spooky town with a stage that literally just becomes a survival horror for five minutes. Like, they just do things they think look cool, and it works. And you can tell that they were just, they were having so much fun just thinking of all of these things that they can do. And they just, they fucking nailed it. Um, I think Sonic Mania has already been said. I, I feel like, you know, it's just people showing their love for a game. And like, yeah, and you both of these actually share that. Like, A Hat in Time is made by people who genuinely loved those 3D platformers of the GameCube era and wanted to make their own. And Sonic Mania is made by people who genuinely loved Sonic and felt like it was a time to make a good Sonic game. Speaking of love of a genre, 
let's let's transition into Hollow Knight. Mm. Hollow Knight was made. I, I haven't talked to him, but just by playing it, <laughs> you can kind of tell that. As far as we know. As uh, far as we know, you can tell this game was made by someone who played Dark Souls and was like, wow, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. And someone who played <laughs> Metroidvania, probably Castle, probably the Castlevania variant, and was like, I fucking love this. Yeah. And this is the perfect blend of those two ideas. It takes what's good about both of those things and sort of puts them together. It, it so, takes, like, Metroidvania-style level design and yeah. combines it with just, like, Dark Souls-level presentation. Yeah, like, like it's the, the atmosphere and the sort of just like, it, and it works perfectly. That yeah. that sort of like, I have I've I've always said that like Souls is like the not the next stage because it almost implies that it's better, but it's like an evolution of I guess that also the same thing of <laughs> of the the sort of Metroidvania genre. It's like a sort of three D Metroidvania, yeah. and they sort of took it back to the two D roots, sort of kept the sort of like Soulsian influence. And I would actually really agree with that about yeah. Dark Souls being like an evolution of like metroidvania style yeah. because when i when i was playing through dark souls the like one of the very few first things i compared it to was castlevania actually yeah. so that, that i actually completely agree with that yeah so it's like castlevania you say so it's like <laughs> one of one of my favorite things that that devs do or like that i feel like not enough devs do is that they sort of set out to make a game better than their predecessors yeah and I feel like Hollow Knight was like, we love these two things. Let us understand what makes them great. And let's try to do it better than the ones before us. And what I feel like sometimes too many games like, hey, we're just going to celebrate, you know, like Song Mania. It's like they ended up doing it better. But like, I feel like. <laughs> but like that wasn't the intent. <laughs> yeah. 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 Similar, similar thing with Hat in Time. It's just like the, the, this game feels like ambitious. It's like like they were, they were like trying to go go that distance now it's not my pick but i definitely do want to talk about all yeah <laughs> like i said i think all of these games deserve a mention because they're all yeah, fucking yeah absolutely so, like, cuphead like these people's dedication to making that game was fucking yeah. well, their dedication made the news baby yeah yeah <laughs> well like, I, as, as much as i don't with, agree with their decision they yeah. remortgaged their house to yeah. make this game <laughs> and while <laughs> i don't well i don't think we should celebrate the yeah. sort of like we shouldn't the celebrate the, yeah we yeah, shouldn't no, celebrate we, that we shouldn't we shouldn't celebrate the grind <laughs> fuck yeah, that's like dedication. that's still <laughs> something that really shows dedication, most, regardless most, of if you agree. With most indie developers would have given up by then, but they're like, yeah, yeah, fuck that. Yeah. I haven't even started so hard. Yeah, at least <laughs> 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 like like being an indie dev is so hard that it's just like it scares away a lot of people, mm -hmm. myself included. Like I would love to make video games; it's my dream, but it's like I can't, I can't sustain myself. Mm. Like, and so it's like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta respect that love and dedication that you. Yeah. put in to make something like that. Not to mention the love shots. These guys clearly love jazz. Who oh, do they love jazz? <laughs> they clearly love yeah. the aesthetic. Like, they put... Hmm. You know what? This... Would it be fair to say that this might be the only category where we just give it to everything? And, and, and <laughs> not, not the game. The uh, entry. The idea <laughs> the, of... The, the idea, idea, the idea of all the... Like, I don't know. I, f I feel like we do have. To we have to pick one. Yeah, we have to pick, we have to pick one. I do definitely. I do definitely believe some have more sold than others on the list. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. they all have like a they really, a really high amount. Of hey, care that's why they got nominated. Did we did we, did we yeah. talk about each game yet? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So now yeah. let's now let's zoom let's, in. And let's, let's, let's 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 force me to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, Whoever had more than one, I think all four of you did. Yeah, I had two. Then we, we all, I had two. Yeah, we all had more than one. Yeah. You had to sit there and pick one. I think Everything. the one that's come up the most. The game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything uh, the game. Okay. So like just just going by like math here. I'm is everyone's number two Sonic Mania? Mine is. Isn't that your number one? Is, is oh, did you say number one? No, it's my number two. I no, actually one. no, it's my Sonic Mania for me is three. I definitely put Cuphead and Pyre. Okay. Okay. I have to pick one of those two. Oh boy! See, like, yeah, Sonic Mania is nobody's number one. It's nobody's no. number one, but, but it's everybody. Unless, unless, your, unless your name is yeah. Rich. Um, yeah, yeah, unless your name is Rich. Uh, but it is. Hey, Rich. I, <laughs> I know you don't listen to these. I, I think. I watch, think, watch, watch! He just comes sprouting through. <laughs> I crashes through the window, ruins the lighting setup by crashing through the window. Uh, because <laughs> um, you said Sonic. I definitely think I could see myself going. Like, if I had to, going Sonic Mania over Mario Odyssey. Because really? Mario Odyssey shines in a lot of places. And I don't think Soul is the place where it shines the most. Even yeah, though it's got, I would, I would agree it's with got that. so many, so much fucking load of character and love. Yeah. But, like, I think... I, think it, it, it's, I don't necessarily say it's, like, a passion project rather than just a really fucking good game. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think Sonic that Mania. kind of falls true with a lot of Mario titles. Right? Yeah. Where it's like they definitely have a lot of love put into them, but yeah. it's it's never really a passion project. Yeah, no, this is like they something... They just really know how to design They just really, really know how to... Games. Yeah. So, like, if I had to pick one over the other, I'd probably say Sonic Mania, just because of how everything is like works against them. Yeah. When they're trying to make an old Sonic game, <laughs> like, literally everything works against them. And they still managed to make the only good Sonic game. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't Sonic 3. From this sucks. Uh, like this. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, 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 Dan, did you three head in for? Yeah. Um, like three head in for a head in time. I think I'll lock in for Sonic Mania. Oh, okay. I think you I think I'll go ig- Sonic Mania. Just ignored my terrible joke. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, because I, I feel <laughs> I feel even worse. I feel like I've con. I've I like like when you said when you laugh. just said throw your hat in. <laughs> please clap. The very first thing I thought of was he's gonna fucking say it, <laughs> and then. <laughs> But that kind of pushed me over to Sonic Mania. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh boy! This but is yeah, oh, I'd say Sonic Mania. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm gonna. The I'm polls gonna, were gonna, rigged. <laughs> they were I'm, rigged. We gotta do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna put in my vote for Cuphead. I. Uh, it's just that. That's just the. I, I've already said my piece, yeah. but yeah. I think I'm gonna settle but, for Cuphead. Yeah, even I though guess, it hurts. I guess Sonic Mania. Sonic wins. Mania wins with two votes. Okay, again, nothing, nothing disrespect yeah. to all these games. These games are yeah, all again, yeah, this, like, this is not the hill I die yeah. on. And, and I'm pretty sure we'd all be fine with whatever was yeah. elected for this one. Uh, let's go right on down the path here with best narrative. What the fuck was on best narrative again? Okay. Uh, for well, best look over here. <laughs> best narrative, we have Pyre, What Remains of Edith Finch, Yakuza 0, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, Resident Evil 7, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Night in the Woods. Can I okay. cut something right and now? And... Horseman. Can I cut something? I just want to cut Resident Evil 7, because I didn't really have a narrative. It just had some good moments. Okay. That's <laughs> like, fair. Yeah, that is, like, not a good narrative. It just... You are witnessing an award show mm. first, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. We are getting rid of an entire nomination. I would be fine with just fucking getting rid of it completely because. But yeah, like, but like, I'm saying, I get, mean, get we rid were, of it. it was for, gonna, we were going to get rid of it anyway because it's not like we're going to pick it. Yeah, no, yeah. This, this is not like. So, I mean, like, Resident Evil 7 should not be in discussion. We just didn't here. update the spreadsheet in time. Yeah, like, yeah. it should not be in discussion well, here because <laughs> it hardly has a narrative. It just, well, has, it just does some cool things. Okay. Ask and thou shall receive. Oh, shit. I still love you, like a yeah. lot, but narrative? No. Um, I want to go last for this one. Okay. Okay. All right, so Greg. I've been going uh, first for the last like three times. The least you can do is give me a choice to pick where I go. All right. Sorry, <laughs> but you, you, you've kind of you've kind of taken the lead cause, cause, I know. Just because I know. you're 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 Give me last. Give me last for this one. Greg. So, I mean, fire. What can I say? Fire is a, <laughs> I've, I've said it before, it's a visual novel, and the minigame is really fucking good. <laughs> so, one of the interesting things about Pyre's narrative is, so you, this isn't the first game that's done this, but it is one of the best examples of, fuck, I don't know anything. And this is when you get thrown into a world, and the, the, the sort of, and your character and you, you're sort of playing yourself, you don't know much, but they they sort of, do it in a very sort of tasteful way where they reveal very little and it leaves you to sort of speculate about what they could be talking about. Like for example, early on, you meet a, like another caravan and they're very angry at you. Not you specifically, but your group of people. And you're sort of left there to speculate why they might do that. And you, you sort of like, that sort of gets revealed later on. But it makes the world sort of seem very big and sort of a lot bigger than you. You are not the chosen one. You are not anyone particularly important you are just the reader and while that does end up being a somewhat important character to the sort of story as a whole you are just one of many which is sort of the entire point of the game the half the lyrics are about sort of like how sort of feeble we are individually but how strong we sort of come together as and that's sort of like what the entire structure of the gameplay works so sort of that ties with the narrative and sort of like just sort of like all those elements put together and I do think when we sort of discuss narrative and the reason we or sort of uh, colloquially or the narrative at least with video games has a sort of added connotation of not just being like oh who had the sickest writing and the sickest story but how you sort of blend the, the sort of story together with the game mechanics and the sound design and I think Pyre does that masterfully. So essentially utilizing the medium for, so for maximum effect. For your story. And instead of using cinematic storytelling um, yeah. tropes and methods utilizing the game. Yes. 
Mr. Adam, or Mr. Dasani, as Hello. he likes to be called. Hello. Hold the spring for the time being until we hear back. <laughs> so, like, uh, give me a few weeks if they... Well, then, if you, if, in, a few, in a few weeks, spring. you also might be Mr. Harry Shave Club. Mm. Are you telling me to shave? <laughs> we could be sponsored. You could shave your legs. <laughs> or... <gasps> can I shave my armpits? I've always wanted to yeah. do that, but, like, I never pretty, actually pretty, did it. It's a lot shiny, of work. Shiny, yeah. pretty, pretty, shiny. You just completely go that way. <laughs> Adam, what's your best? What, what's your? How's the best? Um, in <laughs> God, what the fuck! I played like half of all of these. <laughs> Besides, <laughs> like, um, I, I've like played like an hour of one. Yeah. So, um, I played four of these all the way through. Um, I think I think I'll end up uh, casting my vote for uh, What Remains of Edith Finch, uh, just because it's 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 a short, nice little story, and I really dig. Um, how it tells its story. So basically this game is, um, it tells a story of like a cursed family and all of them died fucking horribly. All of them have these real, really horrible, gruesome deaths. Like one of them is like, there's this kid and he's on a beach. It's not really spoilers, but, um, I feel like for narrative, you kind of have to discuss a little bit, especially with yeah. like a game that is literally, it's a lot so you gotta discuss And it's also only like two hours long. It's also only like two so hours. So it's really hard to not spoil yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. I watched this. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, five. So like, so for example. And then half there's like one kid who is just on a swing set in the middle of a storm yeah. because he's a fucking idiot kid. And he doesn't listen to his family and guess what? He falls off this fucking swing the and swing breaks his neck. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it, it's it's this game that um Um that's the mood. That's the mood falling off the swing set. That's twenty eighteen's mood. Um I I really like how like the order of narrative goes in this game. Where you're starting off in a house like literally every fucking walking simulator now. But how it works is you're going in everybody's room and their living space, and you are finding out things about them. And then there will usually be one object in that room that will trigger, like, a different kind of genre of game, or, like, this really different thing. And I think that's really fucking neat, and I think the story it tells is just, it's just really cohesive and complete. And it even, like, hmm. How do I put this? I don't know, this is a good-ass story. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a lot to say about this because I'm not terribly passionate about any of these. Mm. But um, I think that one just tells a, a really good, nice piece of story. In that genre, you really have to have yeah. a very um, compelling, engaging story. Yeah. yeah. I know those words pretty much mean the same thing, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm also going to throw my hat in for uh, Edith Finch. Because like, I haven't played all of it, uh, but I've gone through a couple of the stories, and I really like how it's formatted. And they're all very... Like just good stories. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like very self-contained, but they're all connected. Mm-hmm. I really like it. What I what I really really appreciate it though is like, in terms of like designing like how the how like they built the game around it. It feels like they just wrote prose and then designed everything else after they wrote the prose. Mm-hmm. Because like if you were to take like every bit of dialogue from each the narration rather not really dialogue out of that story and just put it on a sheet of paper, it's like still completely cohesive. What is prose? Not poetry. Like block, like paragraphs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Forms, forms of creative writing. Yeah. yeah. That are not poetry. Like short, like, like short. Everything that's not a poem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like like literally everything yeah. that's not a poem. Short stories. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's typically broken off into um, poetry, prose, and then nonfiction essays because they're technically different. Yeah. But. Okay. But you, can make, you, 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 you can, can make, make the knowledge. argument that they're I, I, I just, I just asked because I know I don't know much, and there's probably people listening who also don't know much. <laughs> Idiots. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it either, so I'm an idiot too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Edith Finch's for, from like the half of it I've played, it's fucking fantastic. And I also haven't played any of the other games on this list. Like I, oh. I started Horizon, and it had a cool story beat, but I only started it. Uh. And well, actually, no. Also, Pyre. I'm like two or three hours into Pyre. Okay. And Pyre was really cool so far, but I still think where I'm at with Edith Finch is more fun right now, or story wise at least. Speaking of fun, let's talk about a fun fucking game known as Yakuza Zero. <laughs> Yakuza is. Yeah. Can we just can we wrap this up and then talk about how fucking fun that is? <laughs> Yakuza Cause Zero. Because that's not my pick for best narrative. Yeah. Yakuza Zero is really fucking stupid. Yeah, and I mean this in the best way. <laughs> it's it, a it's a it stupid is Shenmue anime. clone with a with a super serious storyline. Yeah. It is the, it is the most anime game I played this year. Yes, not only because it is very silly, but it is also 
has some of the most like emotional highs that I've played any game this year. If that's not anime, I don't know what the fuck. Oh, that that's <laughs> that 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 right there is shonen. Like, yeah, it's literally. It- it has a lot of emotional highs, and yeah. then it has like the worst emotional lows. Yeah, you haven't even got to something yet, yeah. my dude. My like, dude. It's, it's my dude. It's, <laughs> now Talking it's sort of like it doesn't dude. like it's sort of how I mentioned like the reason I would put Pi or say over Yakuza, even though Yakuza is like a more fun, more engaging story with probably more highs. I don't want to say, but the thing that sort of um. This, the thing that sort of like separates it, like Pyre from it is that sort of like that sort of what I was talking about with narrative and like Yakuza is a very sort of segmented game mm-hmm. where it's just like hey now here's cool shit happening hey now walk around the city hey now can you grab me something from a store an unlisted store <laughs> hey, yeah you guys the phone. but like the, like, the stuff I ran out that's of vinegar there, to make rice but I definitely was super surprised to have this like this like beat em up was one of the better stories that came out this year. And that that just in itself deserves a nomination, just of like of going the extra mile because this game did not need to have this good a story. Yeah, no one expected it to have this good a story. No, no one expects a beat 'em to have a good story. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, here it is. It's a beat 'em up, and is so, like the gameplay is slightly deeper than you would expect the beat 'em up oh, to yeah. be, and it's got a good story. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, Yakuza Zero is my second pick yeah. for narrative. My first one is actually uh, Hellblade: Send the Sacrifice because. Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah, what's up? Speaking of games, you gotta respect. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, respect um, the fuck out of this game. <laughs> Hellblade uses a lot of things to get its narrative point across, and one thing that I'm gonna like lay as a base floor is that um, Senwa is um, someone from a Nordic culture who was called a guilt, uh, which is someone who, with a mental illness, who was sent into exile to deal with it through penance. Uh, training, combat, whatever. Um, and the mental illness they chose Senwa or to portray Senwa with was psychosis. So what they did instead of taking like the low hanging fruit of oh she just hears voices, you know she just sees hallucinations. They met with researchers who specialize in studying and understanding psychosis and people who have psychosis and said what do you experience how can we make this a realistic experience and how can we get our narrative across and they took that and they said this is what's going to happen this is how this culture perceived it um in ye old this is how she would have dealt with it and this is how she would have taken on this story as this character so that's like baseline you start out in the middle of her quest. It's kind of at the tail end of middle, um, but you hear this, you kind of are one of the voices that is part of her, um, and another voice is narrating you through the story and through what she's been through to get to this point. So that's like another layer. The next layer is the audio design. Headphones are absolutely mandatory for playing this game. Um, because they did use a binaural microphone to simulate the depth and the, like, strength and proximity of the voices to oh, that's cool. Senwa. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the next layer on top of that is combat. It's incredibly simple. You have a light swing, a heavy swing, you can punch and kick, block and dodge. And parry. If you time things right. Um, but... <laughs> Um, how to how to get how to get Greg interested in the game? Yeah, and Very you can like <laughs> run and hit. That's it. You are taking on these incredibly powerful and incredibly like mythical beings with this simple ass combat. You know, yeah. um, you're a self taught warrior going on this immense quest, and they use the voices in that space yeah, yeah. to warn you yeah. of like they'll say, "Oh, behind you." Yeah. And you will have to dodge from an attack. My, from one, one of my you. favorite stories about this game is it's literally that overhyped thing. Is that someone was talking yeah. about how they were just walking around and they heard the overhyped you from combat, and then there was nothing behind. Them. Yeah, um, <laughs> that was one of my favorite. Just like little, just like spoil like one thing about the game for me. Yeah, just like just that. I'm, I'm about to just like you are, like like there is like it, it, this is a mental illness. Like like 
like some of your voices are like for you and against you. Yeah. And it's just like I love that. She's like, uh, yeah. What a great and idea. That is. They they react to how well you're doing in combat also. Yeah. Like if you're getting hit a lot, if you're down, uh, they'll start being like, "You're so weak. You're so weak. You're so weak." Is like one voice line. Um, and then it keeps going into she's bleeding. It's bad. She's gonna die. It's like they refer to her in the third person, and they do not hold any punches back. Um, then. Like, when you're really close to finishing off an enemy, it's like, one more hit, you can do it, he's almost dead, finish it. And it's just, there's that experience. And then there's her whole methodology for why she's doing this. And, like, all of that together, and I don't want to say that, I've said it, like, if you've probably heard it in passing, but all of that, and, like, her going through that to... I don't have words for this. <laughs> um, all that mishmash together all of, makes all of, an amazing narrative. <laughs> honestly, all of that in order for her to get to her goals, which don't seem like they'd be that great of a motivator on paper, uh, is like honestly the best tie-in and best building of a narrative all together that I've probably seen in a game. It was kind of horrifying. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely yeah. horrifying. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's 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 that scary. Yeah. It's not like oh, look at the dark. Yeah. No, it is. I hope something's gonna come out. Yeah. No, it's like it is. It's like, so it's like a real worst. fucking thing. Yeah. It's like, it's like, that's like when it gets dread. super fucking real. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, I'm yeah. leaving. No, it is. <laughs> yeah. so you don't want to face it because unnerving. it's so like yeah. uncomfortable. That's like, honestly the reason I play the game is because like like I said, I'm like a scary. I'm, I don't like scary games. I don't either. But like I, I've always wanted to play this one, but it's like. Every time I like hover over the buy button, I just like I don't know. I just like bitch out. <laughs> um, but it is a Ninja Theory game. But it is a Ninja yeah. Theory it's game. Playing. Yeah. So yeah, Ninja Theory and, makes great fucking games. Yeah, too. yeah. Very consistent developer. I have I have other arguments for like. <laughs> Save it for Goat. Yeah, no, not not for not for Goaty, for soundtrack, yeah. which we're probably gonna do next. That sounded like it's hard. Huh? When you hit hit the wow. springs, it sounds like it's yeah. like it's like. Are we talking about the um, other two games? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, talk about the other two games. I, I really, I really fucking love horror games, but I hate psychological horror games. <laughs> What's that it's shit? It's not. It's not psychological horror. What's that psychological. shit? Psychological. Yeah. Yeah. What's that shit gets real? I'm out. But uh, like, show me all the fucking monsters you want. I don't care. Yeah, monsters. yeah it's a lot of like monsters cute. and like hallucinations. Yeah. Um, no, see, that sounds real to me. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm just it's that. It's that. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just I wasn't. Kidding. I wasn't like yeah. ever scared. Yeah. Playing the game. Just uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 Incredibly so. Yeah. Um, oh, I know there was one part. It sounds like an art house film in the form of a game. Yeah. But like a good art house. Yeah. Film. yeah like like <laughs> a good art house film, like like Black Swan or something. Yes. Yeah. Which um, also deals with mental illness. That, that's why I thought of it. Yeah. Um, they also. This is more of a gameplay thing, and as opposed to narrative, but they use one of the symptoms of psychosis that they dealt with and put in the game was that people can see patterns where patterns don't exist. So in order to get past some certain things, you have to go out in the world and look for like, oh, that looks like a pattern. So I'm going to line it up. Yeah. And, you know. They also have a focus mechanic, which I'll go into detail later. That's a spoiler for my later argument. All right. There, there's some things I really, really love about Night in the Woods. Um, I think it sets up a really incredible story. And I think... Um, just the raw dialogue they have in between characters and like just the downtime in that game is like really fucking good um, I ultimately don't really like where that story goes and what it does I think it's like a little too big for um, what that story sets up I think it, it, it should have been a much more like intimate kind of like friendship is great kind of deal Yeah. and um, it sets up like that and it ultimately is like that too but not in the ways you want it to and if that had stayed like a little more grounded or something like something along those lines, it didn't have to be necessarily grounded. Just I think some of the things they dealt with weren't necessarily great. Um, just and, I'll agree. And I would have liked. I didn't like the ending. Also, yeah, I would have liked it a lot more if they just kept it more, not more, more real, about the relationship. more about their relationship so you, between you, those you characters. Can, you couldn't mm. go as like insane, magic y as you want. Yeah. But, have the main crux of the conflict be the characters. Emotions yeah, and yeah, not yeah. what's yeah. going on yeah. in, like, Whoa, in the magic what's world. Yeah, some lazy shit's going around. Yeah, town. yeah. It's like, I don't, don't, care. don't have I the care characters. About these people don't have the characters' yeah, yeah, yeah. friendships be an end, a means to getting to that. Yeah, end. That, that that that's kind of what it was. Yeah, and um, yeah, and like there's some really really good moments. Like I really fucking love that that scene of um. May and B at the mall. Mm. That was like one of like my favorite things of like just, just that interaction. 
It was so fucking cool. From what I understand, like, the only complaint I've heard about this game is the ending. Yeah. Like, yeah. from, like, anyone. Like, not yeah. even just you guys. Yeah. It, it, de- it definitely goes in some places where it shouldn't have. Um, but there's some real fucking good moments in that game. And it's all because of the character dialogue and their relationships. Mm. But they don't really... They, 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 those are, like, that's a through line in the game, just not how you'd really want it to be. Like, they're there for you, but I think they were too hellbent on, like, solving the main part of the story. They, they kind of lost track of those first few parts and how it actually started. Yeah. But uh, that being said, I really like that game. Awesome. For, for most of it. I can't speak for Horizon, because I only play the Horizon? Small portion of it. Horizon has a really good story that goes interesting places, and they do a lot with lore to justify the creative decisions they made. I would really hope they do a lot with lore, considering oh, there are robot dinosaurs. Yeah, um, <laughs> the ancient robot dinos. <laughs> is is anyone planning on playing it? Should I, I not spoil? Okay, I, I, I won't. I won't say anything. Like, I, I legitimately I want. I asked. I asked it. I asked it. Uh, I asked Santa the other day. That's Ooh. cute. Santa's not real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but neither is Jesus. Uh, okay. But. Ready? Drawing a line on the set there. <laughs> but Horizon is? <laughs> yeah, Horizon's <laughs> real. Um, but yeah, it it justifies a lot of things in like really good ways. There's no shitty justification for anything they do in their plot. You can kind of see where it's going, and then after like the second big like twist, uh, it kind of... there. Yeah, there are two plot twists in it. Yeah. Um, it kind of like levels out, and it's like, okay, yeah. great. Okay, see, see you in the next game. Or I, de- I definitely heard say? that about the ending. I was just like, it, wow, it can't wait for, for the sequel. sequel. <laughs> it sets it up for a sequel where there shouldn't be one. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't make games that don't have sequels, am I right? It's never happened. Yeah. <laughs> Every game has a sequel. Yep. Well, <laughs> I guess you can say. Right. Cuphead 2 is going to be real fucking good. What? I guess you could say Horizon Zero Dawn has Horizon Zero votes. Uh, yeah, I, I sure. thought you were going to say, is Horizon Zero Dawn? No, that would have been that so, much, so much that better. Would, yo, you missed an opportunity, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, okay. So vote time. Uh, Hellblade is currently... the hill I die on for mm. narrative. Um, I'm okay. Like, like, well, currently, um, what I mean, Edith Finch has two. Yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't finish? mean I'm not going to die on the hill for Horizon or yeah. not Horizon. God no, Hellblade. <laughs> um, I like Edith Finch. She's going to murder me. But here, like, or? I feel like respect. I feel, I feel like it's kind of unfair because I didn't play. I, I, like I, yeah. I, I played all. I, I, don't, of them I don't. I don't need besides. to play these games. I haven't no. played either Edith Finch or Hellblade. Yeah. And th- there's something you have to respect. And that's yeah. ambition. No, oh, yeah. Edith Finch is a, is a good story. It's a good story, but yeah. Hellblade is fucking ambitious. Yeah. You get my vote. Mm, okay. my, I mean, I so pretty I much. Convinced he, Greg. I mean, <laughs> I I would still I still love Pyre. I think Hellblade should win. So if you guys vote Hellblade. I'll vote Pyre. Just to be that guy. Let's make let's, let's make this fun. Um, okay, now I'll just vote Hellblade because it probably. Let's make this fun. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll vote, vote for Pyre. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> I vote for Night of the Woods. Ah, I also vote for Night of the Woods. Okay, no. Yeah, Hellblade. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. I mean, Edith Finch is a good game, but I'll, yeah, I'm fine. Sacrificing you know what? that. Fine for Hellblade. You know what? Hellblade yeah. wins. Yeah, Hellblade wins. Yeah. Oh, you're putting in your vote for Yakuza Zero, oh, or does I, just everyone get a vote except everyone, for Hellblade who gets? Well, no, he, 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 Hellblade wins. But I was like, I'm okay, just gonna, cool. you know, I'm just giving it a vote to everybody. <laughs> Horizon doesn't get one. I, <laughs> so, like I said, Horizon <laughs> Zero votes. Horizon, Horizon Zero, zero done. Zero votes. Horizon Zero done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Hellblade is I, definitely a game I want to play. Yeah, if I hadn't like, played Hellblade, I would have died on the hill of Yakuza Zero. <laughs> Oh, and man. you would have died alone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, want, um, I want you to know. That. Honestly, if I'd known Ninja Theory developed it, <laughs> like I probably would have played it already. Yeah. Like, I legitimately yeah. did not yeah. know that I'm, was developed by Ninja anyone... Theory until like for n- two weeks ago. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm not slaying anyone in terms of narrative for Yakuza Zero, yeah. but we'll see. Go on to our next category, and that's best surprise of 2017. Really? There's my bad. <laughs> Huh? There's one clear answer in the things we have listed. Yes. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Spoilers. No, 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 spoilers, spoilers, yeah, that's a, spoilers. That's an absolute spoiler. We, it's okay. We could just redact you. <laughs> um, we have uh up for best surprise Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. Well, we should, should we clarify what a best surprise is? Like? Oh yeah, our yeah. best surprise was the thing that we were least expecting this year. Yep. To like to be good, to happen, etc. Yeah. Anything. Um, it's very uh. It's very broad, pretty general. Pretty broad. Yeah. 
Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. Ruiner, Slime Rancher, Zarya getting a good skin, Cuphead, Tekken 7 coming out at all, and The Last Surprise. And everything. <laughs> and everything. Not the game, though. Um, but yeah, well, there's one clear winner, which Dan spoiled earlier. Um, but what do you guys think? Um, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Zarya's. You ass white. <laughs> just, just keep going. Just keep going. Well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Zarya's holiday skin uh-huh. or her Halloween skin. Yeah, it's really fucking sick, and a lot of people hate it. And for those of you who hate it, fuck you. Yeah, that AE skin is really sick. It's so fucking yeah. good, and it's her only good one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I agree. It took over a year. It took a year and a half, but they did it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I still like her like Serbian front. Like, All right, so before we were so fucking rudely interrupted by the heater in this room, um, ye- I don't what Adam, you were saying about uh, Zarya has a really good skin. Yes, yeah, and that's a miracle in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, an awesome character like her deserves a good skin too. She does. She's, yeah, she does. does. And She's she finally so- has one. Finally has one thanks to Halloween awesome character. 80s as fuck, and I love it to death. She's, yeah. a, rob- she's a robot racist. Yeah. She is. She is. Sorry. No surprise. Uh, Cuphead! I keep feel like I keep chilling for this fucking game, but I did mention earlier that we kind of, everybody knew the art style, and they were like, oh, that's that's cute. That's, that's a cute idea. I mean, I kind of like it. And then no one thought it was going to be, it. like... No, no one thought it was going to be anything more than, like, you know, an Xbox, like, downloadable thing. <laughs> and then you just kind of, like, you know the old the, the old school like Xbox and, like indie marketplace thing. No, and then you just gonna play it, and then you go, and then and that was the end of it. But it ended up not only succeeding but with flying colors. That game was like yeah taken over. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it was a surprise. I think I kind of just expected it to do well. I expected it to be I expected popular. It to do, I expected to do it to well. do well, but I didn't expect it to be good. Yeah, no, I definitely didn't expect you know? it to be to be a quality product. Oh, yeah. I did. <laughs> um, well. Tekken 7 came out that's it it came out that's a surprise yeah <laughs> like that's it the world is ending Tekken 7 which was in development what two years two years where the hell have you been for the other six it was in development I think, I think it, might, it might have been two years since the cabinets came out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what it was yeah. but yeah that's it like <laughs> there's nothing extra there that's it <laughs> that's it um, I'm gonna cast my vote for Zarya getting a good skin. I am, also. but not to mention huh? the last surprise. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and we are not free you free use anymore. Oh. Fair use. Yeah. What is that on YouTube? I, I anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know what the last surprise is, but now now it's, I'm, I'm intrigued. It's a song from Persona. It's just called oh. the last surprise. We put it yeah. there because it says surprise in it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so. So, yeah, I guess it, it. I'd put also my vote for. I would also put my vote down for Zarya getting good skin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting mine down for Tekken 7, but. Eh. I'm sticking with Cuphead. I think Zarya already has an alright skin. Mm, also, bad. there's a lot. Yeah, you, but, like, not a good. She has a Also, also there's, a, there's a lot. There's a lot you could do with her. So, the fact that she got one isn't too surprising. I think what's more surprising is that it took this long. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's the main gist of it. <laughs> you know what else took a long time? Okay. And Tekken 7. That's true. <laughs> that a long game. But Overwatch has been up for like a decade already, so. That's true. A uh, decade in internet years. <laughs> All right, next guy. So, you know what? It looks, like, it looks like Zara getting a good scan is going to take this one. Yeah. Like, uh, next category. I was going to say something about Guardian. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we got to rush through this. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Just that but, everyone, if you. You didn't like the movies of Guardians? Play the game, Telltale game. It's so much better. Anyway. Um, next up, most engaging soundtrack. Oh, right. we have oh boy. Let's fucking start these. this shit. All I, also known as Greg's category. I've been working very hard on studying for this category. I've listened to so many soundtracks start to finish, and there were two five-hour fucking soundtracks. I, I, don't, I don't know why you did that. Because I'm committed. Because, like, soundtrack Dedication. matters more to me than go to you. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And our nominees are. Higher. Cuphead. Fire Emblem. Shadow of of Valentia. Shadows of Valentia. Thank you. (laughs) I can't read. Persona 5. Splatoon. Mario Odyssey, you see. 
Sonic Mania, A Hat in Time, Hellblade, Yakuza 0, Nier, and of course, everything. <laughs> it's got some good classical pieces. Yeah. All what right. the fuck? <laughs> what, a, what an amazing... <laughs> literally all music. of these soundtracks are godlike. Yeah. yeah. Like, literally all Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. This is rough. It took me forever. I literally, I literally figured out what my choice is going to be today. I spent the past two weeks thinking about it, listening, researching, <laughs> researching, I guess, <laughs> um, <laughs> and just trying to figure out what it is, and it, it's hard. I'm definitely not happy about it. Yeah. But anything I pick makes me sad. But... Want to do some striking for this one? Strike, yeah, let's do striking. some striking. Because there's a lot here. And if we discuss all of these, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. going to take a while. By striking, what do you mean? Like taking things off Take, that we taking are Taking things not off as we go along. along. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys... What do you guys... I don't know. Someone's got to say a game. What's the first emblem? one to go? Uh, it, say, when I was listening to it, it sounded way too jumbled. It sounded way too incohesive. I think you just hate Fire Emblem. Uh, what's the fire emblem? What? I think you just hate fire emblem. I mean, yes, but also, <laughs> it was not as up to par as the rest of the soundtrack. I, I, I'm in the same list. boat, honestly. I Except think fire emblem soundtrack you. is like okay. Dan likes fire emblem. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! And this is from a modern fire emblem that I like. Jum- jumbled. jumbled. I'm, I'm, curious, I'm curious as your choice yeah. of words. Like, like it's not really. Like, if we're, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about soundtracks. So like, I've listened to I listened to pretty much most of the soundtracks. I've mm-hmm. listened to all of Hellblade because uh, there's only so much time in the day. Um, but listening to I, I'm fine with with scratching say Fire Emblem like later. I don't know if it's the it's, not the, fir- it's the, not the first cut. It's yet. definitely not the first cut. Things I would cut before I cut just I keep going. Cut that fucking bitch ass heater. Fuck. That's a shitty song. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, well, are, are you listening to Stitches? Because that sounds like a that sounds like a Stitches song. So of the things here and of what I heard based on based on the sort of the suggested things, I honestly, from what I heard, I was none too impressed from Hellblade soundtrack. It really? Sounded like the songs that were chosen. I don't know if it's represented the whole soundtrack because this was the one I had to skip. Um. Sounded like they could have been from any, like, any, uh, sort of, like, standard, like, fantasy action game. The only thing that I found somewhat interesting was, like, the Norse-like vocals. They sounded a bit different from the standard, like, oh, look, it's Skyrim type thing. Yeah. Like, there was, like, there was, like, some, like, range with the, um, like, just the vocal stylings. Like, like some of them sounded like, oh, that guy kind of sounds like he's probably, he's probably gross or something. And he's singing. Okay. But like, other than that, nothing really jumped out to me. There was I didn't get. There was very little emotional reaction from just okay. just the music based on itself. And I didn't play the game, so perhaps if I had played the game, I would have an emotion to attach to it. No, yeah. But just I think based on the music itself, nothing jumped out at me. I'm curious if I'm alone in that regard. I, I, I listened to the three songs you put, and I and did I, you listen all the way through and on what day? I mean, because I changed them a couple times today. Oh. Okay. Like a couple hours before the podcast. And okay, yes, yeah. I did. Even I though don't, I don't think I listened one. to I didn't listen to your most recent ones, draft. but I listened to the ones like right before them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I yeah the, the most recent draft, draft is like the good one. Okay. <laughs> and and it seems like those those soundtracks, um I feel like that game is almost entirely sound design, and I think it's in the wrong category. That's um, yeah, to an extent. However, yeah. when you're there oh I almost put I think all of them were battle themes except for the metal one, yeah. which I'd argue is literally the chillest track we've put on. We put on the spreadsheet for soundtrack of the year. Yeah, well, that's because the Tekken that song is in there. I mean, However, was... <laughs> the way they underscore the combat and the emotions in that game with their soundtrack mm. is what a soundtrack should be doing. Yeah, no, that's what I've like. When I was listening to the tracks, I was like, "This sounds like it's much better in game." Like, yeah. it, it seems like, it, like, it, like as I was listening, context. I was like, "Okay, I'm yeah. missing something." It is, here. It's an injustice to just pick three songs from Hellblade and say, "Okay, this is best soundtrack." I mean, you could say that about all of them. It, yeah, like, it's, just, it's just no, really it's, just it's that an injustice for every soundtrack on here. I will not I mean, say I mean, that about every soundtrack on here because Cuphead by itself is very good jazz. Persona Five by itself has some very good songs. Mario Odyssey has an absolute banger on its soundtrack. Sonic Mania is good music just to listen to by itself. Hellblade is the only game on this list that has a soundtrack that is essential and completely core to its gameplay. 
I would I would that, very that, much and so that disagree is, with you on the persona part. Persona's entire sound. See, I can't argue that because like, I didn't play Persona. Yeah, that's 5. how that's how we are about Hellblade. So here's the thing: you can have music that serves the purpose in and out the game. Like for example, Nier has very like emotional and like interesting sounding things that highlight its sort of high moments. Yet it's also just fucking bangers. Like I could, I would also listen to say something from the Nier soundtrack and. Even I also get that similar feeling when listening to it. I'm like, if I knew the context for this, then this would be like super emotional. And I, I would just skim over the comments and see people like group crying. One of my favorite things about listening to OSTs is going to the comment section and listening to people gush about the game. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to do. And there was there was a whole lot of that in the in the near stuff. It was people like explaining when the music was used and how it sort of how how it sort of like enhanced the scene and. They're also bangers. So it's like, I feel like Hellblade definitely deserves the nomination. But uh, I think, personally, I think this is where it ends. I don't think we should strike it first, at the very fucking least. All right, all right. All right let's move over let's to move. Yakuza 0. Yeah, that can go first. Butt rock. <laughs> <laughs> if it means I get to keep Hellblade on this list and fucking argue and right. die on this hill for it, then yes. Once, I will strike twi- Yakuza once, 0. Once, twice, Yakuza, strike for Yakuza, Yakuza, Yakuza 0. Um, okay. Butt Rock. I will say... I love Butt Rock. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm I like, can't, I'm like I can't per- defend Yakuza 0 without getting spoilery. Yeah. Also. Um, so. We cut Splatoon 2 next. Yeah. 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 Nowhere it's, near it's, as- got a, it's got a bomb soundtrack, but they all just kind of sound the same. Yeah. Nowhere near as good as the first one. The Sorry. first soundtrack is fucking killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't... They didn't <laughs> They didn't, like, try I and heard... reinvent the wheel this time, yeah. so I feel like it doesn't hold as much weight. Yeah, because, yeah, like, so when you first heard it, it was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's yeah. like, and this one is more of that, which automatically is less impressive, yeah. even though I definitely prefer Off the Hook more than yeah. Squid System. Right. That said, yeah. the soundtrack is still like pretty way fucking Off the Hook is still fucking good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But... Yeah. It, it just it doesn't have the impact, because it's just a sequel. Well, yeah. Splatoon 1 still is the best online lobby way for music. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the same one, right? yeah, they reused the yeah, yeah. one. That, that's, 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 so a good, that's a good call. <laughs> that, that's the one I yeah. put in for Chill Song in this, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's like a really good call. All right. Thanks. Eliminating Splatoon. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Once, oh, you can use my computer. We can all. We, once, we all just kind of agree. Once, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like equally far just, away from I just really <laughs> like saying once, twice, three times. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, cut, cut Splatoon. Cut Splatoon. Now, okay. now, now we're starting to get to the rough territory. Yeah. Fine. Fire Emblem. Cuphead Pyre. Fire Emblem? We agree to eliminate Fire Emblem. Early. No, we we wanted to wait because I definitely think Fire Emblem, like even the bad games, have all had amazing music. Like this game has some of like almost inappropriately epic music, or because it's just, it's just, it's just a strategy game. But like the the sort of like themes that it plays are like this yeah. should be in like Bayonetta or like Devil May Cry. Like they get like pretty high fucking, good. fucking music. Yeah, I I haven't gotten to the part where they get really good. Yeah. I'm like. I want to say like seventy five percent through the game. Or something yeah, the, like the, that. the last. From last what I understand, the music act, gets like oh ridiculous God. at like the very end. Yeah, act yeah. five music is like <clears throat> fucking absurd. Yeah. That's why, like, even just the act five like <laughs> map theme. Yeah, you're it's, like, not, super like, like it's, sad. It's, and it's like really, yeah, it's it's good. Um, but that being said, I do personally love. I mean, besides Hellblade, I do personally love pretty much everything else more. <laughs> I. There, there, there was Except maybe Mario. Actually, I would, I would take on Mario Odyssey. Yeah, the, I, I would say. Well, no, Mario Odyssey has like really? one banger. I mean, it's all, it's and all it's really good. Cool. It has one banger, but like all of its other songs, pretty much perfectly fit the worlds there. Yeah, they're like, yeah. Same with like every other Mario yeah. game. I mean, that's not necessarily true. The, 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 like the, the the soundtrack in this Mario game is so fucking weird. Yeah, and, and, and like there's a lot of like nails... songs in this that you just haven't heard in a Mario game. Yeah, before. like, like there's a lot. Like I think this is like the only time they haven't reused the fucking Mario theme, like in in, and, in, and in a big section. And especially we're in the new age of Nintendo, where they're I don't know the fucking the recent soundtracks and all their games have been nuts. Well, I don't think this is as good as 3D World. It's definitely mm. very good. Yeah, oh, I, I I think it's a different direction in 3D World. Yeah, because this games. is this is sort of more like in the sort of the Odyssey theme, which is like you're going to places that are actually drastically different. And, yeah. the, and the soundtrack represents that. That being said, while I do think they did a great job with the soundtrack, I'm of I'm, I'm of still all torn the song, between like that and like yeah. Fire Emblem right uh, now. Of the songs of 
of like the stuff above it, I'm probably least likely to turn on a Mario song. Yeah, that's like what I'm thinking. Listening. Unless it's um, like Jump Up Superstar, unless it's Jump Up which will override like at least half of this list. Yeah, if we're doing best, <laughs> if we're doing best yeah, we're not track, doing best yeah, it's not best track. no single no. song though. No. No. But it's actually Studio <laughs> It's it's actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I can't say. <laughs> but may that, I, that uh, being, <laughs> may I? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I had him yeah. interject as the ref. Yeah, so I can actually do my job. Yeah. <laughs> um, besides Greg, no one's really made an argument for here. And from, from what Greg has told me, that I, near, okay. near soundtrack sounds, sounds sounds like it's very much like in I, I feel. And everything. C- yeah. I was gonna save this for like my big game of the year argument. Wait, do we have near on that we list? We don't have near on that list. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is the time. Um, I am. I have very conflicting views on near because. Uh, Yoko Taro. Yes. I keep forgetting who made this game because literally I've said this on the podcast before. Yoko Taro <laughs> has, I think, stated in interviews that it is majorly a fetish game for him. And that immediately does not bode well with me. Mm. Especially with everything that's been happening this year about like women's rights and things. And I can't distance myself from my identity enough to enjoy that game. If the soundtrack was good enough for me to do that, I would not have been pulled out of the game so far back that I thought Suda51 made the game uh, in 2B's final like scene in her storyline. Um, I think I'd be willing to suffer through gameplay a little bit more, even on easy mode, and I wouldn't be as frustrated with it as I am. So, I don't think near it should be, at least for me, anywhere near a Game of the Year or Soundtrack of the Year list. That being said, I don't think I got far enough into Nier to properly enjoy its soundtrack and to properly like get to those moments that are like, oh, this means something. Like, this is emotional for me. Like, Hellblade's soundtrack is entirely emotional for me. Because, weirdly enough, there is that connection between the simple combat and the like, oh, I could do this. You know, I could pull this off. That the soundtrack just brings me into that place, whereas none of the other soundtracks on this list do. And I think that's what a soundtrack is supposed to do. You know, this might be the only category I might actually throw my vote in. Okay, do it. So so here's the thing. We're sort of we're we're looking at the soundtracks and we're judging them. Now I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if this is the time and place to sort of to, to discuss the sort of like more personal things about it. But um, as someone who has not played the game and is looking at looking and listening to all the soundtracks, I can say this is fucking this is good. <laughs> like, this music is just fucking good. And that is like while the emotional context is nice, I feel like all these games come with. A sort of emotion attached to them, mm-hmm. and s- some of these games are just just a good fucking time to listen to. Like the what I'm gonna throw on my head for what is my personal choice is fucking Cuphead. Cuphead is it, it, sure it's not an emotional game. That's not sort of what the game is trying to do, but the music itself is just amazing. Just complex. You can, you can listen to the Cuphead soundtrack and not feel like, oh wow, this is from a video game. Like, yes, this it, sounds like a legit. This game. this is just one of the best jazz albums ever made. Not even is <laughs> the, the, the this transcends video games, transcends all that stuff. This is just some good ass fucking music, and it's like dense and interesting and varied. There's so many different styles of jazz within just this one video game. Like they, they like they probably borrowed some genres that happened even after the sort of like. <laughs> The uh, the sort of 1930s where the game takes its main inspiration from, and it's like it's just nuts, man. Like I I I, I struggle for a while to like just settle on my pick, but um, after I was just like one one of the things I I definitely think six Cuphead over the vast majority of soundtracks is that I think Cuphead is the far and away the best soundtrack to leave on shelf. If you the rest of these these games, they have like very sort of varied soundtracks and in a sort of very weird way where it's like, oh, I don't really feel that one, but I really like this one. I feel like Cuphead is just like all, but I really like this yeah. one. And so, if we're gonna be if we're gonna start talking about like 
like the heavy hitters here, I definitely think mm-hmm. Cuphead is leading the pack. Mm-hmm. I would say Cuphead's a heavy hitter. Yeah, I definitely think it's a, it's, it's like it's like very cohesive, and it's like like a tight it's like a tight package where like no one song is necessarily better than another or something like that. It it, it all goes very well with each other. That being said, um, oh, fuck, no. I don't want to cast my vote yet. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Greg, I don't know what I'm voting for. Greg, uh, Greg I, are you casting your vote for Cuphead? I mean, I'll just sort of keep talking, but yeah, that's where I've settled. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's where that's where the dust settled in my I, mind. I just want to I just want to put put a notch next to it. So yeah. 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 So, but like, if we're just gonna talk about other games and music soundtracks, yeah. fire. Super Giant is known for their amazing. Super Giant's music is fucking. This is no incredible. slouch. Yeah. No slouch. It, there's, I, I mentioned before the sort of like multicultural sort of influences in the soundtrack and how that the sort of all blends together to sort of have like that idea of like the, this caravan of people of different races coming together. And I think that that exemplifies beautifully through the soundtrack. Not to mention, they do like interesting things where it's like the evil government is like represented like through the use of harpsichord and like the sort of dark evil is represented through like more synthetic sounds. And the soundtrack just goes off places. So. Not to mention, bangers. <laughs> I, I definitely really like two of the songs you put for Fire, yeah. but I think the one you put under Banger, the the, the one with lyrics. Yeah. But, and I, I I did not like that not song. Like, yeah, even I'm slightly. in the same boat. I, I, th- I thought that sounded like some kind of fucking cut Lion King 3 song. <laughs> 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 like, it, like, it wasn't even good enough to make it in the third Lion Damn. King movie. Okay. Like, Ooh. I... Di- I, I I I just like that song. I really but, enjoyed Hickory Hang. But I like I like the other it's two okay. songs. Yeah, the other two. Yeah. I wasn't a, quite as harsh on it. But yeah. I did I do think it's out of place. There definitely is a little bit of that with the soundtrack. Like I wouldn't say this is Super Giant's like strongest soundtrack. But yeah. um there are it's other pretty two hard to be transistors. transistors it's like, really hard to be transistors yeah. soundtrack. Oh man. Yeah, we definitely we definitely uh <laughs> that was probably Splatoon year two, right? <laughs> uh, we definitely screwed the pooch there. It turns out yeah. definitely have the best soundtrack whenever it came out. But um, where was that? that? I think that was 2014. Oh yeah, Ish. yeah. yeah. So um, we, you're just saving face. <laughs> yeah. But um, I forget what there it was. there is a little bit of that, but I think I I do think that that was sort of intentional, and it kind of fits in the game because it's like yeah, it was 2014. There's like 2014. Yeah. Okay. okay. There's that whole like bar thing going on where it's like you have the lone minstrel and the are we cutting anything so um oh yeah but we were we were last going to cut either either fire emblem or mario or, or Nier. um or Nier, I, guess. I i i feel like i didn't experience near enough or hellblade enough to say much about it um i, I just put the near soundtrack on shuffle and like platinum makes good music yeah so like I I don't I, don't I enjoy feel... it. It's it's platinum music. It's yeah, like it's super that, platinum music. Yeah, it's like super platinum, but it also has that like five wheel. Like, there's yeah. like all these like weird like haunting vocals. Like even within the action song. Yeah. yeah. There's like there's like the the driving, you know, like the snares. And just like yeah. It's just like way too fucking epic. And like like just the 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 soundtrack itself invokes emotion because like I listen to it and I'm curious about what the game's about. Like, what's with this sort of, like, electronic yet sort of, like, what's the word? Like, sort of angelic vibe to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. It makes me think, like, the game is at least attempting to go to somewhat interesting places. Now, whether or not it succeeds, I don't know. I'm talking about the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> so, the soundtrack, just listening to it with having pretty much zero context about the game, sort of invoked emotion within me. And that's, like, that's more I can say most than most soundtracks. So usually it's just kind of, like, it's like, oh yeah, I remember that moment. Ooh, I remember when it, and the music swells up to the point where the guy says this. And it's like, yeah, but it's like this just by itself made me interested. And that's more than I can say about most soundtracks. Mm. But um, God, this is just so many good ones. Hat and time, fuck. Oh my God, this so is some, good. Some good songs. Hat so good. I loved, I loved all the songs that you that you chose. Right, they're fucking um, lit. Hat and time has a lot of variety. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fitting just, with the game. Yeah. That's it goes from like classical to metal to like EDM, lo fi. Yeah. Like, like the, final, the final boss theme is like all of it put together. <laughs> like, yeah. there's like, Yo, there's, like, you're EDM all the parts. bad guys is like one of the best nine minute songs I've ever fucking heard. Yeah, yeah. This is this is hard. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the order is definitely. 
Well, we have to cut something. What are yeah. we cutting? Um, no one's really argued Sonic Mania. I was, I was going to yeah. say that. I, I think yeah. it's because we all expect it to be very high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think we're just all in agreement that Sonic Mania has an amazing soundtrack. It's like, it's like a really fucking good soundtrack. Right. But, well, but, there, but there are lots of songs that aren't necessarily good on it either. Yeah, yeah because they have... There, there's that weirdness, so it's like... I honestly don't like some of their remixes. And a yeah. lot of their remixes. The, my favorite song of theirs is their own original song, but like yeah. the remixes of the old stages, I wasn't really feeling it most of the time. Sometimes they're good. Yeah. I really liked the remixes of Flying Battery and Chemical Plant. Flying Battery is a really good one. Yeah. I definitely. Yeah. I wasn't feeling Chemical Plant because mm-hmm. I think that's personal. Just because no, I chem- love Chemical Plant. It's really plants. hard to do better than like, the base <laughs> Chemical Plant song. Yeah, yeah. They tried oh, their best. No, I, I, I remember, no, I like the Chemical Plant one a lot, actually. I just remember what that one was. <laughs> no, I, I, I love the really stage, good. but like... No, even the song was good. It, it was just like kind of similar, but it was like really echoey, and I kind of really liked that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I actually yeah. can't remember too many specifics. Um, um, I also really like the um, Saloon one. The fucking... Um, yeah, I, no, I know which one you're talking about. I can't remember I the name. You forget uh, Mirage Saloon? Yes, yeah, yes, that's yes. a really good song. Um, but that being said, we have to kill something. Oh. I mean, oh. we've oh. still oh. been debating on taking off Mario and Fire Emblem, yeah. so... I'll, I'll, I'll do it for since I'm, I don't want it to win short. Fire Emblem, let's go. Bye! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Wake it to the point. Wait, do we cut Sonic Mania off? Is that is I, that a I thing? Just, okay. Ooh, I would definitely... I mean... For me personally, while I think Studiopolis is the best track this year, yeah. I think overall as an OST, I, I think yeah, it's I think other games have better soundtracks than it. I'm fine cutting Sonic Mania I, out of this list. The what ones I am fine cutting, I'm fine cutting Pyre, I'm fine cutting Mario, I'm fine cutting Sonic, I'm fine cutting Hat in Time. Hmm. I agree. Pyre, Sonic Mania, and Hat in Time. That's fair. I would I would argue a, a uh, for a hat in time simply because it's like like it is probably without a doubt like the most varied soundtrack on this entire list and on top of it being varied all of the songs are also super high quality. Yeah, I definitely if 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 hat in time gets cut, it's definitely there. I would cut. It. Well, let's Literally about, everything let's... we're saying is I'd cut that. Oh wait, no, I wouldn't cut that. I would, Ooh, cut, we Mario could cut Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. I would cut Mario Odyssey. I'd be fine with Mario. Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. If you need me to be the swing vote, I'm here. You'll probably be the swing vote. <laughs> um. All right. Let's cast some fucking votes. Let's let's cut this bullshit. Yeah. Pyre. Um. For elimination. Yeah. Bye, Pyre. Pyre. Yeah. For mm-hmm. elimination. Sure. Mm-hmm. No. I'll run. Uh, yeah. For elimination. Yeah. Pyre. Yeah. Right. No, 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 for higher. Okay. Yeah, eliminate, yeah. yes or no? Oh, yeah, eliminate. <laughs> Adam? Pyre, yeah, eliminate. Sure. Okay. I'm going to say no and we're going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> swing vote, bitch. Um, yeah, I'll, it's not a swing vote if you're beating four to one. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, when I, when I... I just like saying swing vote. <laughs> but, like, when I, when I play games, there there's something I really, really like about soundtracks. And it's when... If I'm doing a cool thing, and then that soundtrack will then agree with that cool thing, mm. even if it's like per random chance, in like it, it like it just so happens to be that part in the song, and I'm doing a cool thing. Yes, and those are like my favorite moments yes. in, in like in soundtracks ever. That is yes, and that happened the most with me with Persona Five. I would agree. Like there, there were so many fucking times in Persona Five where I'm like, I'm doing this really cool thing, or what should be cool thing. Yeah. And this guitar riff just started playing as I'm doing this, and it made me really excited for a game I wasn't enjoying. Like, I felt like the soundtrack for that game is the reason I played 130 hours of it and, and went through at the end. Just because of those, like, small moments that just kept, kept fucking kept me going. Yeah. Like, literally every time you send the calling card and you get yeah. Life Will Change playing in the back, yeah. it's just, okay, I'm going to do this now. I'm hyped. I would literally skip fights so I could continue listening to that song. I'd be like, oh man, there's a guy. Nope. <laughs> See, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's the weird thing about what Persona 5 does where it's like, it, it goes to show just how much better it would have been if we didn't have uh, Last Surprise. 
Because when you yeah, do, right. when you do the calling card, even when you get in fights, it just kind of muffles life. Yeah. Just, life will change. Yeah, and it feels way better than like having whatever cool jam you're listening to interrupted yeah. by. I think I think Persona Four Golden actually did it the the best way, because what happened in Golden was um you had the base fight track make history yeah. but whenever you landed a surprise attack by hitting an enemy in the back to trigger a fight you got a uh, reach out to the truth oh yeah and, that's right that's right that's right and, and it was a good remix of reach out to the truth too. so like oh, so good. The, the game rewards you with a better song for doing the right thing when attacking an enemy yeah. i actually experienced this a lot in uh, cuphead too because like the the way they structured lots of the boss fights is that there would be a musical transition upon the average time that you'd beat a phase. Mm-hmm. I remember this specifically with Beepo the clown. Oh, with the, the fucking asshole clown on the... That um, fight was fucking tough, man. That, that fight was tough, but a lot of the time I would beat him right as... And the phase two would start like right as like the... Right as the... um As the sort of next movement in the song happened. So there definitely, there definitely is a bit of that in Cuphead as well. There, there was definitely something with Cuphead with me where I really, like, going back to the soundtrack, I really fucking like listening to it. Yeah. But, like, when I was playing that game, I don't actually think I was paying all that close attention to the soundtrack because of the sheer amount of things that are happening yeah. at once. So I, I think that definitely is, like, why I'm, I don't think so fondly of it because I just yeah, because wasn't like, exactly you, you, paying attention to it. Yeah, you, like, you, it. Don't, you don't associate it with the game that much. Though, yeah. Like, I, I've definitely noticed a bit of that, too. Where it's like I I'm really familiar with the beginning of the songs mm-hmm. and like towards the end like I'm just like super I'm hyper focused yeah because like you hear the beginning yeah while it's like still like loading mm-hmm. because just like I was listening to Pyramid Peril that was the song I I linked in the chat recently and I was like this is like some like dense fucking jazz just like really good like stanky fucking jazz yeah. and I I never appreciated it during the boss fight so you could you could definitely argue that that's a not versus it but. I feel like that's just the that's just a problem with hard games. Yeah, it's just like you just you're just not gonna fuck you. You have to be you have to be too on point to really appreciate the music. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, also ready to cast. Yeah, one. I'm gonna cast my vote for Persona Five. Cuphead. I got you now. Hellblade. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's definitely. This is rough. Four way uh, yeah. tie. Four way tie. It might be because I'm debating between either Persona or a Hat in Time. Yeah. I'd have, I'd, it's, 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 I'm of two minds about it. It's just like. I, 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 I also am, but I. This is really hard. Because, like, Persona 5, a lot of the songs that. Like, the, the soundtrack is certainly very good. Yeah. But I find myself not really playing a lot of music outside. Yeah. Uh, like I play like Rivers in the Desert a lot. You know, I play Last Surprise. Not Last Surprise. I play Life Will Change a lot. Yeah. But like I don't really find myself playing many songs other than that. Whereas Hat in Time, there's so I've many. I've just been going de- like it's literally been like the only thing I've been playing on Spotify yeah. for like a week. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about. <laughs> yeah, like, it's huge. Like literally today, I just put I had autoplay on while I was in the shower. I just put on Cuphead and I just listened. I would never be able to do that with Persona Five. Yeah. Because there, there's just like, I think there's too many songs. First yeah, of one all. there's that, but it's also just like, there, there's this sort of like weird like variance in like tone and yeah. like, and even then it's like, what is this one? This was a battle theme. Like Life is strange, rivers in the desert. All these songs, yeah. they kind of sound the same. The, 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 I, I understand they're in the same genre, but it's like Cuphead, despite being in the same genre, has a very varied yeah. feel to its sound. Like each song. Like, barring a few, there are, like, one or two songs where I'm like, okay, you know, that kind of sounds like this, that kind of sounds like some other songs, but, like, the vast majority are, like, super varied. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's yeah. honestly what puts Cuphead on Persona 5. The thing for me with Persona 5 is that I, I feel like, uh, or at least between my two choices, the thing, the thing that's really keeping me from not knowing is that I feel like A Hat in Time overall has a soundtrack I enjoy more. I feel like Persona 5 has a soundtrack that fits its world and personality better. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, fits, you... it fits its world so fucking well. Yeah. And that game would be it, it's fucking nothing without a soundtrack. I agree. I, I think I, I don't don't get me wrong. I love Persona 5 soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Why does it though? Does it fit the world or is it just so good that it just it, kind of, it, it fits... Because it's like the characters do not 
exhibit outside of their transformations they do not exhibit the attitude that the songs come with there's very little like the like the the way the way they go about the world the way they solve the problems the way they sound and act is not the cool phantom thief idea that they try to sell to us sure. the music sells that idea very well yeah. but they themselves just kind of feel like high school kids mm. who I, haven't figured themselves out yet I, th- I think there's two things to that i think the music doesn't necessarily fit the characters but i think it fits what's going on yeah in that world yeah. like in the in the fucking in the metaverse. I, I also metaverse. think, it, like, I think in it, terms of characters, I think it fits like everyone that's just not a fan. Yeah, you know? like I, I th- like go into the fucking clinic and buy medicine. You know that fits Takami perfectly. Yeah, you know? the, the, but her theme is one of the unique ones. But I, like the the sort of like all the Phantom Thiefing songs, one they sound really similar, and I love them all. But um, they sound very similar, and like. It, it sort of like sells this idea. Yeah. One of the main reasons I was disappointed in Persona 5 was because I was let down because I listened to the soundtrack. The soundtrack conveys this idea of you being these awesome master thieves who are like maybe gray in morality. But like the fucking lyrics The Last Surprise is kind of fucked up. But like what do you do? All you do is like you're just justice lads the entire fucking game. <laughs> but like, <laughs> like that's tough because is that necessarily the game the Soundtrack's fault or yeah, the game's no, it's fault? De- it's definitely... Yeah. So, like, we're, we're at the point where I hold all these soundtracks pretty much equal regard. Yeah. So now I'm trying to, to to figure out what puts yeah. one above the other. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it seems like we're only talking about, like, the soundtrack. The Persona 5 that happens in the metaverse. Like, a lot of the good fucking songs are outside of the yeah, metaverse, Yeah, a lot of the too. good songs are... Like, yeah, like, my, my, fav- my favorite songs are definitely all, like, the chill ones that happen yeah. outside. Like, there were so many times where I was playing Persona. And it probably inflated my playtime a lot. But I'd be like, you know what? I'm just gonna like. I'm just gonna leave this here for for an hour or so, yeah. and try to get some shit done while this is in the background. And like we, before we uh, continue talking, mm-hmm. Dan, do you have a vote? Mm. I know. What, I think I'm gonna put in for hat in time. We okay. currently have we have a four way tie. Yeah, four way tie, tie yeah. or that I can do this one. So near near oh, and shit, Sonic, oh, yeah, they're we gone. Could, yeah, I think I I think we should just like call it this one. Okay. Like it's just so, so. Oh, that's actually interesting. Since we all pick something different based on our arguments. Yeah. Or I don't know if you've actually listened to the soundtracks or so. I've only listened to two of these soundtracks, yeah. and but, that would be A Hat in Time and Cuphead. Uh, Cuphead is phenomenal. It's a great game and a great soundtrack that reflects the art style, the aesthetics, everything you've been saying the entire time. Uh, Persona Five, from what I have heard, it's very varied. Keeps that sort of jazzy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jazz is I, back. I, I really, I, jazz yeah. back, baby. Jazz is fucking bad. <laughs> Let's fucking go. I really enjoy Jazz Fusion. Yes. yes. Um, That's like all of Persona 5 sound. Yeah. yeah. Really, really good Jazz Fusion, man. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> black women. Anyway. Save Hashtag Persona yeah. 5. It would have made it. Oh my. Oh my. If, if Persona 5 yes, soundtrack literally... was sung by a thick black woman. It would have been the best album ever. Fight me. <laughs> it would have. Like, it would have. It wouldn't even have been. The imagine, best River, ma- imagine Rivers in the desert, but like she kills it the whole. Time. And like ten times more soul in that. Yeah. Oh, fucking god. <laughs> Anyways, so from what I heard, it's not. It's not bad. Um, but I haven't listened listened to enough of it. Uh, Hat in Time, I've said, is incredibly varied. It is a lot of fun to listen to. Yeah. However. The way Diana just described Hellblade soundtrack might be the most compelling argument I've heard for something. That's a little touching. After all, <laughs> like ever? You are correct. It is ingrained into his gameplay. And for that alone, I'm going to cast my vote for Hellblade. I there just we think go. It's, uh, it's dumb, but I just think that's the wrong category for Hellblade. I oh think, yeah, it I, is. Th- no. I think we're arguing. It is, but we don't have a best sound, sound design yeah. category. Yeah. But well, then fuck but, it. But then. even then, it's like, like a, I mean, my favorite like, soundtrack all year was Dragon Quest Heroes Two, and it's just a shit ton of remixes of classic Dragon Quest songs. Yeah. And that is like niche and only for Dragon Quest fans. And hi, I'm the only one on the, on the live cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one was gonna vote for that, but me. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Trailblade wins, but that's the wrong fucking category. Mm. Yeah, I'll admit that. It's the wrong thing for this category. However, yeah. I do. I just like to know that I I posed a compelling argument. Yeah, it was, and like, now I want to go listen to it. 
you might be disappointed. Yes. However, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, it sounds, however, it listen right to it in atmosphere. game first. It sounds very so, so play the game. Play the game first. Play the game. And then listen to the soundtrack. I'm sure they're really disappointed if you just listen to the songs. Yeah. I do just want to say one thing you, about Persona 5. Yeah, that was, that was, Are you trying to swing the vote again? No. You know the vote's over. I know the vote's over. It's I'm just red. saying, Persona 3 and 4 had better soundtracks. By it far. It did. It yeah. did. But unfortunately, oh, four, Persona 3 and 4 yeah. did not come out this year. Um, or another re-release of Persona 